Okay, now we've mounted our outside condensing unit, in this case the IS36G110. We've leveled this, we put this on cinder blocks, we have a slight angle to the back so that when we have condensate from defrost, it will defrost and drain. So we've got this all set up now. Shortly we will take off the cover of this. We're going to attach the electrical lines to this, communication lines, and the refrigerant lines. So we're going to come in upcoming episodes to show that. So this is our IS36G110 unit. Okay, we're, we're outside here hooking up the outdoor condensing unit, the IS36, and we're hooking up the communications line first. So, Garen, want to tell us a little bit about what you're doing right here with the communication lines? Uh, it's the serial communication between the air handler, the control box that's mounted at the air handler, and it communicates with the uh, control board in the outdoor unit, and that's the communication that it has uh, instead of the standard system having thermostat wires. So we have a C1 and a C2, one is red, one is black, and then we also have a drain. And you want to explain, uh, Xen, what the, what the drain does, the purpose of the drain, the shielded wire. We have to use a shielded wire for this. You can't take thermostat wire because we'll get electrical interference, we'll get RF wave interference. The yeah. RF wave interference is basically blocked by the shielding foil and the drain connects to just the chassis ground and it will collect that stray RF energy that may interfere with our communication. The serial communication is a very low voltage so any little bit of interference can definitely cause a problem. So we're using 18.2 in this case, right? 18.2 with drain is I believe the way that the industry calls it. Yes it is. In fact I think we could, you said it's very low voltage, we could probably use 22 gauge wire if, if we had to, as long as it was shielded. Yes. Alright, so let's have you go hook that up. The color coding is very important. The, the black wire here is connected to the black terminal or C1 mm -hmm. at the indoor unit. Right, we have to connect C1 to C1 on the indoor unit, C2 again, same way. And we have to ground it as you just did there to the chassis. All right. So that's something a little different with the I-Series, is the communication lines. Now we're going to hook up the electrical power, and that's pretty much the same as what we've had for condensing units, isn't it, Karen? Yes, this is a standard. Just a line, a neutral, and a ground. Okay, we're, we're just now finishing up the power supply. This is a 230-volt single-phase power. We have our two black power leads coming in, which shows L and N, but there actually doesn't have a neutral with this. It's just two lines coming in. And the last one, of course, is the ground. Now this has got a 50 amp protection to it, so based upon local code, we chose to use 10 gauge wire. So you need at least 10 gauge wire, uh, possibly even thicker than that. So that's our power supply. Again, we showed you how the communication wires were hooked up before. That's low voltage. Of course, this is high voltage right here.